Good morning, teachers. I welcome all of you to the experiential online teacher training program that is being conducted under the name Sugama for the higher primary school teachers in Tumkuru and Madhugiri Educational Districts from Diet Tumkuru in collaboration with Caring with Color, a Mansi Kirloskar Initiative. Today, we have all met here for the English training program under the subject nouns. Today's topic is nouns part two. Elargo namaskara. Ivatu noun eredne bagavana prasata prasta divi. Hagagi nimgella, even do prasutige swagatana bayestane. Nimgelago gotiro hage. Jilla shaykhanika samardana karikramada dinali. Caring with color samste, matta diet tumkur, matta diet madhiri savayogali. Irithia sarani karikramana ajus the bandi divi. Iganau Nama Sugumukarna, Perche Marsana. Nanjute Girta Kanta Yella Sugumukara Nanota de Renevo, Nanjute Sindhu Meda Midare, Auru GHPS Purva the Likelsa Marta, Gagle, Hindina, English Adivation Gilimge, Perche Trukuda. So Jotege, Shukur Saridare, Auru KPS Patnak Nelly in the Bandidare, so Auru Kudanimi, Indina, Adiagrali, Perchitragidare. So, other Jotege, caring with color in the Nalk Jana Sugumkaranam Jote Dare. So, Kruti Dare, Swati Subramane Dare, Sushili Dare, Matanam Jotege, Asha Raman Kudai Dare. Mute Arujana, Satatuagi Hatu de Negalinda, Idak Bekar and Tapuru Tari Marconi Dare, Sonim Hege Prasta Perspekon of the Kondu Puru Sitte Marconi Dare, Mata Astu Puru Sitte and the Gendi Mudege. Prasta Patrick Pandare, so you will learn even though Adivation Aki, Akmi Wagi, Nimeller Parwagi, Swagat Sitene, Mate Yeldu Diet Naparwagi, Urgen and Hartik Wada, Swagatana by Stene. Then you are there. I welcome you all to the second module of nouns. But before we get into the second module for nouns, let us recall what we had learned in the first module of nouns in the last week. So recapping through the last module, we can recall that we had discussed what a noun is We had also discussed the various types or categories of nouns. We had also, through some interesting activities and ideas and stories, discussed about singular and plural nouns as well. With that recap in our minds, let us now go into the second module of nouns. And I hand over to the other facilitators to facilitate the first session. So this session begins with two friends meeting in a marketplace. Hey Sindhu, good to see you here. Have you come here to shop as well? Hey Kriti, yes. What have you come to shop? Oh ho, this shop is out of potatoes. I really wanted some for my dinner. Well, that shop across the street has lots of potatoes. Let's take some from there. Great idea. By the way, 
I see many new brands of butter here. Do you need any? Yes, I need to buy some butter. I need to buy some onions too. I'm planning to cook a delicious curry tonight. Oh, you can go ahead. I don't want any onions. I have not at all. Sindhu, by the way, I was wondering why do we say some butter and not five butters? I have never heard anyone say five butters or ten butters. It's always some or any butter. Hey, Kriti, that's because butter is an uncountable noun. We use some, any, and a lot when we talk about uncountable nouns. Wait, Sindhu, I'm confused. What is an uncountable noun? Oh, don't you know about uncountable nouns? No, Sindhu, I don't know. Come, Kriti, I will show you what countable and uncountable nouns are. Countable nouns are nouns that can be counted. It may be person, place, object, or idea. The boy has three books. Here, the noun book is quantifiable and can be counted in numbers. Hence, it is a countable noun. A countable noun has a singular and plural form. Hey, Kriti, do you remember the training that we attended on nouns last week? Yes, Sindhu, I do. There, we had learned different spelling rules that is applied to convert a singular word to its plural form. All of those rules are applicable here. For example, a pen becomes pens and a bus becomes buses. So, does that mean a butterfly become butterflies in its plural form? Yes, Kriti, you are right. Kriti, but I must warn you, there are different spelling rules to make plurals of different nouns. And there are some exceptions too. For example, child becomes children in its plural form. And goose becomes geese. Uh, Sindhu, then what are uncountable nouns? Uncountable nouns, as you can make from the name, cannot be counted in numbers. They are not quantifiable. For example, floor, water, fog, etc. Uncountable nouns have only a singular form, but never a plural form. Therefore, you cannot apply any rules to make it plural. For example, dirt, rice, information, jewelry, etc. Jewelry is an uncountable noun which has no plural form. We say, the thief stole my jewelry, but not the thief stole my jewelries. We never say dirts, rices, or informations. Wow, this is so interesting, Sindhu. Kriti, while some uncountable nouns like dirt and rice are visible to the eye, and can be seen, others can only be perceived. For example, information, advice, etc. Oh, I never knew that. I would like to know more, Sindhu. Can you share other examples of uncountable nouns, please? Yes, Kriti, why not? Here are some more examples for you based on different categories like food, material, subject, etc. I hope it helps you understand the concept better. Thank you for sharing this, Sindhu. You are welcome, Kriti. The English language is very interesting. Here is a fun fact about these nouns. Some of the nouns can be both countable and uncountable. Oh, is it? How so? Let me explain. Some nouns can be used as both countable and uncountable depending on the context. For example, chicken is food as well as the name of the animal. 
we had some chicken for dinner there are 20 chickens in my farm tea tea is a drink in general and refers to various kinds of teas i prefer some tea while working i like both masala and assam teas i am learning so many new things today sindhu but tell me one thing how will i know when to use the noun as countable and uncountable actually kriti when you refer to a noun with specific count then it acts as countable noun and when you use the same noun without a specific count or measure and use the words some more less to define it then it acts as an uncountable noun dear participants let's test our understanding of what we have learned so far this is a poll question so please enter the correct answer and press submit to register your answer please do not answer in the chat box student is a countable noun state whether it is true or false please select true or false as it appears on your screen and your time starts now now the time end thank you dear teacher the correct answer is true because student is a countable noun as you can count the number of students in your classroom Hey Sindhu, if I have to teach this concept of countable and uncountable nouns to my students, to whom I take tuitions for, how can I teach them these? Let's look at some transaction ideas that can be used in teaching learning process. There are some images given here for you. Some of them are countable nouns, while others are uncountable nouns. show the images to your students ask them to identify the objects and make their plural forms wherever possible for example cake cakes money money rain rain dear participants can you type few more examples type your answer in the chat section and send it to us so that all of us can read it thank you dear teachers for your responses the next activity you can try in your classroom is about uncountable nouns and their quantifiers first explain to your students the different quantifiers commonly used with food related nouns such as a dozen a cup a piece etc then ask them to identify and fill in the blanks with the appropriate quantifiers for the nouns given these are really wonderful activities sindhu thank you for helping me i will definitely use it in my classroom thank you kriti sindhu i need to go now meet you some other time bye bye kriti I am going to purchase some flowers next. Hey Swati, are you here to purchase flowers too? Yes, Sindhu. I am here to purchase a few flowers as a gift to someone. But I am unable to convey the right quantity of flowers to the shopkeeper. Could you please help me with it, Sindhu? Oh, sure, Swati. Just ask for a bouquet of flowers. Oh, okay. Can I have a bouquet of flowers, please? Thank you, Sindhu. Oh, don't mention it, Swati. Coincidentally, me and my friend Kriti were just talking to each other about countable and uncountable nouns. Ah, uh, hey. Speaking of uncountable nouns. The term bouquet of flowers is that an uncountable noun? No, Swati. That is a collective noun. Now, what is that? 
I'm totally confused by this. Not to worry, Swati. I will explain it to you. A collective noun is a noun or word used for a group of people, things, or animals. For example, a choir of singers, a range of mountains, a swarm of bees, and a bouquet of flowers. Dear teachers, this brings us to another poll question. Which of the following words is a collective noun? Duck, children, family, women. This question will appear on your screen now. Choose the correct answer and click on submit button to register your answer. Thank you teachers for your responses. Um, the correct answer is family as it is a collection of people. Teachers, here is a transaction idea that you can try with your students. After the learners are familiar with different collective nouns, test their understanding of the same. Create two sets of flashcards. One set will have the photos of various animals. The other set of flashcards will contain the collective nouns used for animals. Display the cards from both the sets to your students. Then ask them to match the animal card with the respective collective noun card. For example, the collective noun card school of dash matches with the card which has the photo of fish on it. That becomes school of fish. Similarly, herd of dash matches with sheep and so on. Play this game as many times as it takes your learners to learn the collective nouns for animals. Hey Swati, good to see you. By the way, beautiful red roses. Hey Shukur, good to see you too. Thank you. I love roses. Swati, I have a question for you. Please go on. What is love? Um, love is... Um, I don't know, Shukur. Well, the answer is simple. Love is an abstract, uncountable noun. Oh, is it? But what is an abstract noun? Abstract nouns are nouns that cannot be seen, touched, smelt, tasted, or heard. They can only be felt or thought. They are words that are used to denote ideas, feelings, experiences, qualities, etc. For example, excitement, anger, happiness, love, friendship, curiosity, beauty, etc. Abstract nouns are the opposite of concrete nouns, which can be experienced with our five senses of sight, touch, smell, taste, and sound. For example, rice, books, shoes, bed, etc. That's some useful information. But I would like to know, how can I teach this to my daughter at home? Here are some activities that you can try to teach your daughter. Dear teachers, you can incorporate these activities in your classrooms as well. Swati, show your daughter the image of the bicycle. Ask your daughter to write as many abstract nouns as she can on one wheel and as many concrete nouns on the other wheel. This will strengthen her understanding that abstract and concrete nouns 
are opposite in nature. That's a good activity. Are there any more, Shukla? Yes, Swati. There is one more activity. Is there? Show your daughter the image of the flower. Ask her to recall how she felt when you told her that she cannot have chocolates until she finishes her homework. Let her write all that she felt on the flower petals. For example, irritation, hunger, etc. That's really interesting. Maybe I can give her different scenarios and ask her to repeat this activity. Once your daughter is more comfortable with abstract nouns, take up this activity. Dear teachers, you also can take up this activity in your classrooms. Swati, ask your daughter to think about any major event or incident that has occurred in the recent past, such as her examination, birthday, or a family picnic. Tell her to write five to 10 sentences describing the event using both abstract and concrete nouns. Once she finishes writing about the event, ask her to circle the abstract and concrete nouns using different colored pens or pencils to distinguish them from each other. This activity is wonderful, Shukur. It will help my daughter to use her favorite colors and her imagination. You can do more. Give her the worksheet containing the sentences. Tell her to identify and underline the abstract nouns. For example, bravery. Oh, these ideas are so creative and fun. I'll definitely try them out with my daughter. She will surely enjoy learning about abstract nouns now. Dear participants, let's test our understanding of abstract nouns. Select the correct option to complete the sentence as displayed on your screens. The question is, dash to animals is a punishable offense. You have the options cruelty, cruel and kind. You can start to answer now. Thank you so much for participating. The correct answer is cruelty because it's an abstract noun. Hey Shukran and Swati, nice to meet you both. What are you guys discussing about? Hi Sushil, good to meet you too. Hey Sushil, good to see you too. We have been discussing about abstract nouns and Shukur has been giving me information about abstract nouns and different interesting ideas to teach that to my daughter. But it's time for me to leave now. Thank you, Shukur. It was a nice conversation. Meet you both later. Sure, Swati. Meet you soon. Bye, Swati. See you again. So, Sushil, what has been happening in your life? My sister recently got married, Shukur, and my brother-in-law is a very accomplished man. He is a chartered accountant, you know. Um, but I wonder, what kind of a word is brother-in-law? Silly you, it's a compound noun, Sushil. I'm sure you guys have been discussing a lot about nouns. But why don't you tell me about compound nouns as well? Sure, it would be my pleasure. A compound noun is a noun made up of two or more words. Each word makes up part of the meaning of the noun. For example, ice cream, brother-in-law, self-esteem and many more. Actually, 
there are many subtypes of compound nouns would you like to know more about them are there yes please tell me shakur yeah the first is the single word compound noun for example black and board becomes blackboard book and store becomes bookstore the resulting compound noun is a single word there is a second type of compound noun that is two word compound noun when nouns are combined the resulting compound noun is of two words for example ice and cream becomes ice cream shukur that's interesting is it something like full moon yes you are right sushil the third and final type of compound noun is a hyphenated compound noun this noun formed by the combination of two or more words as a hyphen or dash in it for example 90 plus 9 is equal to 99 in words 90 hyphen 9 other examples include brother hyphen in hyphen la brother in law in the word part time part hyphen time and in the word self esteem self hyphen esteem and so on oh now i understand why the word brother in law is written like that thank you for the wonderful explanation you are welcome sushil in fact chakur this conversation about compound nouns has given me an interesting idea for a picture puzzle here it is let me see if you can solve it look this at the combination of these images and figure out what compound word these images are referring to i can see the image of lips and another image is of a stick i think the compound word for these images is lipstick am i right let's see if you're right yes shukur you are absolutely right now i have a couple of more puzzles for everyone teachers i request you all to play these rounds along with shukur and try to answer to these picture puzzles this is the next set of images I request you all to please share your answers in the chat section by looking at the combination of these images you have to try and figure out what compound words are these two images referring to please go to the chat section and type your answers and press on the send button so that everyone can look at your answers and yes starfish is the right answer let's look at the next set of images look at these two images again and try to figure out what compound word are these referring to yes sun plus glasses sunglasses is a compound word here are the next set of images look very carefully i think this is the easy one now let's look at the answer football the foot and the ball make up for football that was wonderful teachers all the teachers have played the game very nicely very interesting but shukur i was wondering would you have any activity ideas for all our teachers from which this concept can be taught inside their classrooms yes sushil 
here are some interesting classroom transaction ideas for you to try with your students this is a list of a few words add a suffix or prefix to the words to make compound nouns for example with the word sun many compound nouns can be formed such as sunrise sunset sunday sunlight etc ask your learners to come up with as many compound nouns as possible for a given word this idea is very nice i think it allows the learners to play around with the concept of prefixes and suffixes as well while engaging with the compound nouns i have another one sushil create a snowman by drawing huge snowballs on top of each other write a word on the snowman's head such as in you must add a suffix or prefix to the word to create a compound noun write the resulting compound nouns on the snowballs one noun on each of the snowballs for example inside insignificant in loss etc encourage your students to form a bigger snowman each time they attempt this activity by adding more snowballs and more words on top of each other to build their vocabulary wow these ideas are wonderful thank you for sharing them dear teachers it's time to test our knowledge there is a poll question that will appears on your screen choose the right answer and click the submit button the question is is the word because a compound noun here two options given yes or no choose the right answer and hit the submit button the right answer is no the word because is not a compound noun as it is not a combination of two different words thank you teachers you have participated very well thank you for your participation i think there's someone at my door hey kriti welcome please come in hey sushil thank you so how is your wedding planning job going on oh this year has been very festive and eventful for me actually there's a unique wedding that i'm planning for i'm so excited about it oh what's so unique about it um it has a unique list of guests i have created a video for my client to visualize how the wedding would look like let me show it to you as you can see it's going to be a mixed crowd the wedding will be a lot of fun it definitely looks like it i look forward to meeting the female lion the lady deer and the male hen wait did you just call a lioness as female lion um yes isn't that what it's called is the female lion called lioness yes the female lion is called as lioness do you know what the female of a peacock is called as um i don't know mm it's called as peahen wow i never knew that sushil 
in english there are different words to refer to different genders like lion and lioness do and deer girl and boy etc um then i have a doubt to which gender does student belong to hmm good question student belongs to neutral gender since a student can either be a boy or a girl oh i didn't know that can you please tell me some transaction ideas i just want to teach the same in my classroom oh definitely sushil here's a transaction idea for your classroom once your students are familiar with the gender of nouns ask them to create a family tree in this family tree they can write the names of the family members and also paste photos for example grandmother uma and grandfather krishnan subodh uncle and seema aunty sound and they can go on adding other members of the family too yeah really interesting it really sounds interesting yes it is um uh, dear participant we have one last poll question for you and the question is which among the four options is a gender neutral noun please select the correct answer the correct answer and submit the answer to us so as we can all see almost 78% of the participants have told us that the answer is child yes the correct answer is child because father is male bride is female rooster is male while the word child can be used for both male and female so the correct answer is child thank you teachers thank you dear teachers for participating so well so wonderfully with so much of energy in today's session let us take a quick look at the journey that we have taken so far today in this module we looked at countable and uncountable nouns we also looked at collective nouns abstract nouns and compound nouns and we ended with a quick look at the nouns in genders i want to share an important thing with you after this using these ideas and activities in your classroom will engage students actively and will also fulfill the learning outcomes prescribed by the ncert as you can see these are some of the grade level outcomes for grades 4 to 7 that are defined by the ncert the activities and ideas used in the webinar are mapped to some of these elos thank you very much brinda over to you thank you dear facilitators i also heartfully thank all the teachers for actively participating throughout the session and i could see the chat box overwhelming with the responses and you are also thanking us for this beautiful session thank you teachers now i would like to uh, give a small information about teachopia teachopia is an application developed under the initiative of caring with color teachopia is having attractive lesson plans for all the chapters uh, from grade 4 to grade 7 for english and with respect to nouns we can see uh, the lesson plans for household articles hobbies profession in grade 4 love for animal the child who saved the forest children of courage and bravery awards my land for grade 5 and also some chapters in grade 7 so i would like to request all of you look into the lesson plans and check out if you can use them in your classrooms